Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CAC English. About me, I am Sandeep Bhushan Tumala and my credentials are I have 10 years of teaching experience for civil services. I teach international relations and internal security and analysis of the Hindu newspaper. And this session will help you to crack prelims and mains because I would be emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases from the news item. So the importance or the emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases will certainly make you get into the mode of identifying the factual and analytical questions which will be very very important for prelims point of view. So thereby by emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases by me from the newspaper analysis that is today's session we will be in a position to identify the factual and analytical questions for prelims point of view as well as by imbibing the keywords in the key phrases along I mean in regards to your entire preparation that is especially focusing on the answer writing that is for the mains examinations so definitely your answers for the mains examinations while imbibing the keywords in the key phrases you will be in a position to make sure that your answers are concise and precise. So when your answers are concise and precise in regards to the mains examinations, certainly you will score more marks in the mains examinations because that is what is being demanded by the UPSC that your answers should be precise and concise. And you can be or you can get into the mode of being your answers being precise and concise when you are imbibing the keywords and the key phrases. So definitely this session will help you to crack prelims and memes both for 2020 as well as 2021 and there is a notification in regards to let's crack UPSC CS English which is India's largest learning platform once you get subscribed you will get unlimited live on recorded courses from the India's best educators and the privileges what you get once you subscribe to an academy is the daily live classes live tests and quizzes structured courses and unlimited live and recorded courses and these are the educators at an academy which you can see it on your screen and in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English, the courses offered are Economy, Environment and Ecology, Current Affairs. Along with that, you have the other courses that is Essay Writing, Internal Security, as well as Social Issues and all the other courses which are also, you can see it on your screen. And in regards to Let's Crack UPSC CS English subscription, you have 12 months of subscription wherein the original price is 44000 you can use my code SBT10. Do use my code SBT10 to avail 10% discount on the original price, which is 44,000 for 12 months, and the discounted price would be 39,600. So do take the advantage by using my code SBT10 for 12 months subscription, wherein you will get 10% off on the original price, that is 44,000, and the discounted price would be 39,600. So as well you have 24 month subscription wherein the original price is 64,000 for let's crack UPSC CAC English subscription you can use my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala because to avail 10% discount you can use my code SBT10 on the 64,000 which is your original amount and the discounted price would be 57,600 so do take the advantage of subscribing the 12 months and 24 months but do not forget to use my code SBT10 to avail 10% both for 12 months and also for the 24 month subscription. So SBT10 Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10. And today's session is in regards to analysis of the Hindu newspaper wherein I would be again reiterating my tagline. My tagline is emphasizing on the keywords and the key phrases. So definitely the keywords and the key phrases which I would be emphasizing throughout my lecture will be definitely helpful for you in regards to the prelims as well as mains examinations. And before I get into the topic, I would say very good morning to everyone who are in the live and also in the live chat. So, uh, Shivi Bijalwan, Shivi Bijalwan, Kiran, Bhuvanesh Bhuvi, I think Bhuvanesh Bhuvi, are you for the first time listening to my class? And welcome to our analysis of the Hindu newspaper by Sandeep Bhushan Tumala. Kavani, good morning, Vanilla. Malvika, Sudarshanan, a scientific calculator allowed for CSE, electrical option, no no uh, electronic gadgets are not at all allowed. Uh, we have seen that what has happened just two, two to three years back, we have seen that what has happened in the examination. So definitely all those are not allowed. Bonesh, Bhuvi, those are not allowed. We have seen that what kind of, what do you say, <laughs> high tech, high tech uh, uh, copying has been taken up uh, two to three years back. So definitely it is not allowed, Bhuvi. <laughs> Bhuvi. 
can i call it bhuvi bhuvanesh bhuvi now we'll get into the topic that is we have the topic which uh, the news which is very very disturbing today's news because we have been talking this about this face of uh, of the indian troops along the lsa indian troops versus the chinese troops along the lsa we have been uh, what do you say almost a fortnight plus we have been discussing or we have been looking into this news and since may 5th there is a face off between may 5th 2020 there is a face off between the chinese troops and the indian troops and what is really disturbing is that even though the both the countries were involved in the military engagement and then the diplomatic engagement but we have seen that at the end which was not supposed to take place has taken place and this is very 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 disturbing news for me and i i i think it is for the entire nation itself everyone it is a disturbing news why because 20 indian soldiers have been killed in the face of at galwan and what is really disturbing is because of the military engagement and diplomatic engagement we have seen the partial disengagement or or partial de escalation which has taken place first in the galwan valley itself first in the galwan valley itself still we have the conflict uh, zones which have been identified as pp14 that is patrolling point 14 15 and 17a and the north block or the north block of pyongyang lake and also in the nakula pass in the nakula pass so all these are still the conflict areas but the one which was the partial disengagement has taken place in regards to troops was in galwan valley but the kind of what you say the incident which has taken place on the june 15 midnight is very very disturbing and it is really causing a cause of sense for the india's uh, uh, foreign policy itself foreign policy itself and we have seen that uh, uh, 20 indian person along with the colonel we were killed in the violent clashes between uh, both the troops along the lac that was in the galwan valley uh, in ladakh eastern ladakh and this is the worst incident between the two countries in decades and this is certainly the worst incident and 17 indian troops uh, who were critically injured along the line of duty that they were working under the sub zero temperature at a very high altitude terrain have succumbed to injuries injuries and they have been killed and in total it was 20 uh, 20 indian personnel were been killed in the entire face off and this is a really a disturbing uh, news to start up for me uh, because we have been following since almost almost 15 20 days have been taking up this news along with the uh, pictorial representation and all that we but i mean nobody has expected that it would be this kind of what do you say <clears throat> situation 20 indian soldiers killed uh, shiva bijalwan says sir aap thoda slow slow समझाइए प्लीज इट्स माय सेकंड क्लास ऑफ हिंदू एनालिसिस अभी थोड़ा टाइम लगेगा इतना फास्ट कवर करने में ओके फाइन डेफिनेटली शिवी शिवी बिजालवान डेफिनेटली आई विल आई विल आई विल इनफैक्ट आई वाज थिंकिंग इनफैक्ट आई वाज थिंकिंग आई एम वेरी स्लो टुडे बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस न्यूज़ आई एम वेरी स्लो टुडे माय माय टोन एंड वॉइस इज आल्सो अ लिटिल लो बट आई विल ट्राई टू मेक श्योर दैट आई विल बी वेरी मच Uh, incompatible to your uh, acceptance levels see definitely 100% i will try from my end and we have seen this uh, the three personnel who have been killed i mean 20 have been killed but the one who have been identified the identified or colonel b santosh babu who is from telangana from uh, nalgonda district avildar palani from the tamil nadu and sipoy kk oja from jharkhand so this is very very disturbing news that three of them have been identified and there are reports that many of them in the scuffle they have what do you say fell into the galwan river also and they are trying to what do you say uh, fish out or get them back is what the news is all about and we have seen what do you say the pyongyang so area the standoff has started actually at may 5th on may 5th and yeah surepet surepet nalgonda district surya pet it is and then on may 5th and may 6th itself we are talking today it is we are talking about the june 15th news but there was this couple or stand up on the may 5th and may 6th night itself santosh babu yeah johan has joined very good morning to you johan and then itself we have seen 76 indian personnel including a commanding officers who were uh, injured who were injured were airlifted to delhi so this is what we are talking about the loss of life in regards to the personal indian personnel uh, indian soldiers but we have seen on may 5th and may 6th also 
there were a scuffle between Indian troops and the for, uh, Chinese troops. That is, Indian 76 Indian personnel, including a commanding officers who were injured, were airlifted from uh, the Pyongyang Lake, Pyongyang So Lake area, and then they were airlifted to Delhi. So definitely, from May 5th itself, the situation is very, very tense in the entire Galwan Valley area, and also the, this is Pyongyang Lake. This is Pyongyang Lake. So definitely there is there was again second scuffle on May 9th at Nakula Pass. So definitely now we are just trying to what you said get the, the complete information that May 5th and 6th also we have been into the scuffle between Indian soldiers and Indian troops and then Chinese troops. Again on May 9th it this was at the Pyongyang Lake and May 9th it was at Nakula Pass, Nakula Pass and June 5th Galwan Valley, Galwan Valley. So look at it is not new what we have actually seen so definitely there could have been we are not trying to what you say uh, uh, find fault at the government or find fault at the defense minister or find fault at the concerned officials but probably when the situation has happened things would have been uh, handled it hey we know that there was military engagement and uh, also uh, diplomatic engagement going on but this kind of situation what we have seen is not at all good for the both the countries foreign policy or diplomatic relations and definitely if we look at the situation what is right from May 5th and 6th we have seen 70 army personnel were injured and on May 9th again at Nakula Pass the, uh, this couple has taken place and then May 18th it was Chinese has accused India saying that we are actually illegally going ahead with the construction infrastructure at LAC, at LAC. So that is what is very, very important that China is not really happy with the border infrastructure development. China is really not happy with India going ahead with the border infrastructure development. And that is what may, on May 18th itself, China has said that India is India has trespassed and it is building illegal infrastructure on LAC. Look at the way China has come up. And then we have also seen that on May 17th, China says border situation is stable and controlled. But what we have seen on June 15, 16 is very disturbing or comparing with the May 27th, what China has said. And definitely we have seen that on June 6th, June 5th and June 6th we had a diplomatic engagement on and 6th we had the military engagement and then five areas were identified as conflict areas between India and China along the uh, LAC and that is Pangong So Lake and patrolling point as I said 14, 15, 17 and also Chusul area is the one which is also a uh, area of conflict. So definitely these are all very important for geography map based for the prelims point of view for the prelims point of view. And we have seen that on June 15, 16, that is the violent phase of which has taken place. And this has been even after there was, as I said, the escalation of troops which has taken place in Galvan Valley. Instead of that, we have seen this violent phase off. And then in the mix of this phase off, 20 Indian soldiers were very skilled. And in this, what is the irony or what is the, what you said, a, a, a thing which is uh, actually has taken place is no firing has taken place. No firing from both the ends, but we have lost the loss. I lost the uh, Indian soldiers as well. There are reports, even there are casualties, even from the Chinese side. So definitely, could be there was what you say situation wherein both the sides were engaged in the face of using what you say uh, stones or kind of medieval uh, fight might have been taken place at the in the Galwan Valley in the night of June 15th and 16th. And Siddharthan, very good morning to you, Siddharthan. Madhu, also very good morning to you, Madhu. So, Ivan is now really disturbing. Why I am saying disturbing is the way we have with India-Pakistan relation, India-Nepal relation, India-China relation. Look at it. All these are really detroiting. All these relations are detroiting. And we have seen the LOC with the... Uh, uh, India Pakistan and LAC with India uh, India China and India Nepal now the new uh, new Nepal political map issue that is the Kalapani issue 
is the one which is uh, uh, really causing a concern from India and probably it is a kind of what is a coordinated effort or the, at the behest of the China what we are actually going ahead with the Nepal issue also. No doubt Pakistan we are having that LOC uh, issues or the ceasefire violations in long time but now the situation is in regards to India Nepal and India China. So along with the added that in regards to the ceasefire violation along the LAC between India and Pakistan. So this is the one which India has to keep on focusing in regards to uh, keep on engaging uh, having talks with the Pakistan, Nepal and also China to resolve the issue and make sure that the issue is what you said resolved. And we uh, will look into the other news which say that a study has been conducted and it says the chief drug show results in COVID-19 patients. So definitely we have been uh, looking at this news, a barrier news as a hydroxychloroquine or remdesivir where or also in regards to the various tests which have been going on in regards to the RT-PCMR and also in regards to the antibody test and also in regards to the plasma therapy test and also in regards to the antigen test which yesterday ICMR has come up saying that it can be used also. So in regards to all this, in midst of all this, what is also very important is that we need to look into the report what the Indian uh, doctors have also come up with saying that dexamethasone. So this is the one which the doctors now say that dexamethasone is an inexpensive steroid which can be used even for the even for saving the lives of COVID-19 patients who are on ventilators who are on ventilators. So this is please do understand this is a steroid dexamethasone is a steroid and what is that we will look at this is also that it is a good news that it is also working uh, on the COVID-19 patients who are the ventilators and it is saving the lives of the COVID-19 patients who are ventilators but as this being a steroid probably there could be some kind of side effects of so as being the steroid it could be some side effect but as of now it is working for it is working and it is saving lives of the COVID-19 patients on ventilators and scientists who are actually administering the WHO so you have scientists who are working uh, for the WHO that is the one which is working for WHO scientists that is for recovery trial so they are working for a WHO administered recovery trial the WHO administered recovery trial and this is the key phrase please do write it in your notes the key phrase here is the WHO administered recovery trial WHO administered recovery trial <clears throat> and this is the largest global clinical trial and this is the largest global clinical trial which is going ahead in regards to coming up with the clinically tested drugs for the COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 disease and they are also reported on June 16, 2020 that dexamethasone reduced deaths. They, are, they haven't said that it is uh, what you say as a drug or a, a clinically tested drug or vaccine. They said dexamethasone has reduced the deaths. Please do understand this is very very important for Flynn's point of view. Why? Because this is a key phrase. That is WHO administered recovery trials, global clinical trial, which is the largest global clinical trial. That is a WHO administered recovery trial is the largest global clinical trial and it has said that dexamethasone has reduced the deaths. It hasn't said it is the clinically tested drug. It has reduced the deaths. By what? By one third in ventilated patients. Please do understand. It is in regards to when one third in regards to the ventilated patients, the patients who are on the ventilations and one fifth and one fifth on the patients who are receiving oxygen, who are receiving oxygen but not on ventilation. Please do understand there is difference. And this is what for a, what you say conceptual or uh, 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 application point of view you need to look at this and there are no benefits no benefits on what on the people who do not require respiratory support that means who are infected but who are infected but not on the respiratory support on them there is no benefit so definitely there is a benefit on the patients on ventilators or who are receiving oxygen and especially one third on the ventilated patients and one fifth on the receiving uh, the patients who are on the receiving oxygen that is on the 
respiratory support and the one who is not on the respiratory support there is no benefit that is what who has said this who has come up with this it is the who administered recovery trial which has stopped or which has come up with this report and what is this it is the largest global clinical trial it is the largest global clinical trial and this is very important why i am saying is it is a it is a steroid and why is it is a steroid it, we need to make into uh, get into a proper understanding that if it is used if not clinically tested then it could be a problem it could be a problem and, and anil kumar very good morning to you anil kumar and and the professor at clinical immunology and rheumatology rheumatology in the sense it is for the uh, what do you say bones so professor at clinical immunology and rheumatology that is at the sanjay gandhi postgraduate institute of medical sciences institute of medical sciences has said that it is cheaper option than tocilizumab so there is another what you say drug that is called as tocilizumab which is also what you say administered to make sure that it would also reduce the death cases in regards to the COVID-19 patients. So it is the dexamethasone and also the tocilizumab. So these two, please do try to get into, the, uh, put it in your uh, answer sheet or else in your notebook. Uh, and tocilizumab is also being tested as a recovery trial and it is an injectable. So definitely it is also being tested by the <coughs> World Health Organization administered recovery trial so these both dexamethasone and also tocilizumab is are both what you say being tested for the saving the lives of the covid 19 patients who are in the ventilators and definitely these both are not are not antivirals please do understand as we were talking about hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine is anti-malarian drug anti-malarian malarian drug right and the same way this dexamethasone or tocilizumab is not what is an antiviral it is not antiviral but it works to modulate the immune response so both the dexa and then tocil tocili are both are for to modulate to make sure that it increases the immune response so it is for the immune response why i am saying in depth all this is because there could be possibility in the prelims that is in regards to the science and technology a question can be asked on the drugs which are being what do you say used across the world and also in india and why they were actually brought into or why they have been what is said developed for which for which disease they were developed and why they are using for and they are also using for the COVID-19 patients. Please do understand this hydroxychloroquine and then dexamethasone and then tocilizumab and then remdesivir. All this please do take into consideration that there might be a question that in the match the following, in the match the following. On the one side A you would get these diseases and the B they would ask, I mean the, 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 the drugs on both side and the other side the for which disease they have been used. Probably there could not be any question on the COVID-19 itself. They will not be, I mean, I'm just saying, probably there could not be any question on COVID-19, but the drugs which have been used to save lives of the COVID-19 patients, those drugs, those, what do you say, for which disease it was actually, what do you say, produced? That question could be asked. Steroid is, which is like, it is a stimulating one. It stimulates one. That is what I said, dexamethasone and tocilizumab are not antivirals, but work to modulate the immune system it's, it's it stimulates it increases so steroids generally what uh, who takes it it is the what do you say the sportsmen use the steroids why because it increases their metabolism and then they are into a different mode of that which they are not actually so the stimulation do take place nervous system and physically everything what you say it stimulates uh, Rakesh Jawan says, are you going very slow? <laughs> Rakesh, uh, very good morning to you, Rakesh. Actually, I have got an, what is a request from Shivi Bijalwan. I have got a request from Shivi Bijalwan saying that, so please go little slow. So definitely, I am taking into consideration of Shivi's request and then I am going slow. So definitely, you all can make out the difference. Even I can make out the difference that I am going very slow. But it is at the uh, behest or the request of the Shivi. So definitely once once Shivi also gets used to my pace, then definitely I'll get slowly into what you say, I'll I'll get into my mode. <laughs> I 
and there is another news which talks about lives and livelihood are our priority and mr modi our prime minister narendra modi uh, prime minister of india narendra modi has made this statement that lives and reviving livelihoods lives and reviving livelihoods are very very important and then on june 16 we have seen that prime minister narendra modi has gone ahead with the video conferencing with all with almost 21 uh, chief ministers and uh, the union territory uh, uh, lieutenant governors so definitely in that he was very clearly saying that it is important that we save lives and also revive the livelihoods look at this and this is very very important in regards to the key phrase saving the lives and and uh, it is not lives and livelihood it is saving the lives and reviving livelihoods this is a key phrase saving the lives and reviving the livelihoods and why i am emphasizing all this is because it is very important that you need to take into consideration what is been Uh, the words or the statements, key words or the key phrases which have been told or which have been said by the prime minister or the cabinet ministers, cabinet ministers also I am saying, and also the external affairs ministers and the secretaries and the secretaries. So it is very important because based on that we need to make sure that how we need to imbibe the key words and the key phrases for the uh, betterment or else for scoring the high marks. And this the prime minister has said that we need to save the lives and reviving the livelihoods. and that he has made it in response to the covid-19 pandemics that he is also making it very clear that the economy has been opened up and it should actually continue and they have gone ahead with opening the economy after the unlock one and he also emphasized that by opening up the economy after the unlock one it has had a green shoots what do you mean by green shoots and this is a keyword again please do take it into consideration green shoots means sign of growth or renewal sign of growth or renewal this is what is important imbibing the keywords and the key phrases green shoots so prime minister narendra modi has said that because of what you said that the kind of situation we have taken to kick start the to kick start the economy to kick start the economy that whatever we have gone ahead with the 20 lakh uh, crore economic stimulus package is actually now at the time of what you say after the unlock one the opening of the economy is taking place and the opening of economy is also at the green shoot that is there is a growth and revival which is been taken up after the unlock one but he is making it very clear that the it, it has to be kicked in the uh, economic activity has to be kicked in but strict adherence to the wearing mask observing social distancing frequent hand washing and maintaining hygiene he says this is very very important in regards to making sure that we concentrate on the concept of kick starting the economy but making sure that we follow all the guidelines which are by the union health ministry and he has also used the word or the keyword key that is green shoots for the revival of the economy and he also said that in regards to the horticulture agriculture and micro small and medium enterprises the economy is actually surging and they, he also also said that there are various what is the decision which have been taken by the government that is by the prime minister and by the finance minister that in regards to the atmanirbhar bharat atmanirbhar bharat that is self reliance and this is a keyword atmanirbhar bharat campaign atmanirbhar bharat campaign why to boost various sectors such sectors like horticulture agriculture micro small and medium enterprises why i am saying this is because when our prime minister has come up with a campaign that is atmanirbhar bharat bharat or bharata self reliance campaign so which areas of which sectors he is emphasizing we need to focus on it for the prelims point of view for the prelims point of view and also macro level mains point of view and he has also asked the state government to go ahead with or to come up with the policies to hand hold what is this hand hold keyword holding hand yes holding hand is what for asking the support we use the word hand hold so definitely is asking to support the small enterprises to work with the bank so that the small enterprises would get credit available under atmanirbhar bharat campaign so again definitely the atmanirbhar atmanirbhar bharat campaign is very very important in regards to this scheme or in regards to this campaign which has been taken up by our prime minister narendra modi that is in regards to boosting few sectors that is horticulture agriculture micro small and medium enterprises especially focusing on or helping the small enterprises he has also requested the state government to come up with the various policies so that they support the small enterprises 
to make sure that they are working in tandem with the banks to get the credit. And now we will look at this Atma Nirbhar Bharat, the road ahead, which are five pillars of the self reliant. And this is very, very important for the prelims point of view. And also means you can just write it in your answer. The five pillars of self reliant are in a one line and leave it. That is in regards to the economy, in regards to the infrastructure, in regards to the system. Uh, technology driven in regards to the demography by, uh, demography and in regards to the demand. So these are the five pillars which wherein our Prime Minister Narendra Modi have come up in making sure that he has uh, come up with the five pillars for the Atmanirbhar Bharat or self-reliant. So this is very very important for films. I am talking about the five pillars are very very important for films as well as mains also. You can write this five pillars directly in your answer. And Atmanirbhar Bharat we have seen that 20 lakh crores of package which have been given and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has focused on four L that is land, labor, liquidity and loss and these are again very important for prelims point of view. Please do take it into consideration whatever I am saying, I am saying for the benefit of you all that is in regards to the civil servant aspirants whoever are all listening to my lectures or would be also going through my recorded lectures also please do take it into consideration these are very very important for prelims point of view and Atma Nirbha Bharat is to cater for laborers, middle class, cottage industries, MSMEs and in other industries why because we are talking about the Atma Nirbha Bharat campaign to boost such sectors which are the sectors we have looked at and what are the bold reforms which are the need of the R again this you can put directly in the mains the need of the R as a suggestion supply chain reforms for agriculture and for rational tax system and the simple and clear laws that is what he was talking about laws focus on four L's land, labor, liquidity and laws in one of the bold reforms which is the need of the R is the simple and clear laws and the fourth one is in regards to the capable human resource so whatever resource we have we need to use it and we need to use the capable uh, uh, human resource what is uh, in India which is the strength of the young aspiring in India and strong financial system has to come into existence. So definitely Atma Nirbhar Bharat campaign is very very important for Prelims point of view. And before I get into the next slide, I would read uh, what Anil Kumar has said. I've joined here for the uh, first time. Please let me know where to get the PDFs. Um, uh, PDF files, are you talking about PDF files Anil? I think from the YouTube you cannot go, you cannot get the PDF files. You can get the PDF files if you are uh, subscribing for the an academy. I think that is the what you say uh, uh, rule or the conditions or the guidelines of the an academy. You can get it uh, once you what do you say uh, download the an academy learners app and then be part of the an academy special classes or else you can subscribe for the an academy. Here I don't think so. And that is as per the an academy, what you say rules and regulations. And this Atma Nidhar Bharat campaign is very very important for the prelims point of view. And the next topic is that climate report. It predicts a climate climate report is predicting, and the climate report has been taken up by the inter intergovernmental panel on climate change (IPCC). IPCC. So IPCC has come up with the report, and this IPCC. I will come up the will come up with the report is will is expected to come up with the report uh, in the year 2022 and prior to that there are projections which are made in regards to that there are projections which are made by the IITM that is by the Institute of Tropical or Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology so Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology has come up with the projections in regards to the in regards to the climate forecasting model and these are all very very important for prelims point of view so climate forecasting model is very important keyword and then indian institute of tropical metrology directly again it is very important what is a keyword or the key phrase you can take it into consideration and the intergovernmental plan panel on climate change ipcc is also very important you wherein you can directly put it in your answer and they have gone ahead with the Especially the projections have been made by the climate forecasting model which has been developed. Climate forecasting model is developed by Indian, Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology and this which the model climate forecasting model has been developed it says that or it will be part of the I mean this model will be part of the IPCC report will be which will be 
projected in the year or which will be ready in the year 2022. And what does it say? The India's first national forecast. It is the India's first national forecast. So please do take it into consideration. National forecast on the impact of global warming. Impact of global warming. So India's India's uh, uh, forecasting model or India's uh, climate which will be impacted by the global warming on the subcontinent that is onto the subcontinent and in the coming century expects annual rainfall to increase. So what it predicts is rainfall to increase and also more severe cyclones. Yes, we are experiencing, we have seen Amphan also. We have seen Amphan also. And then what is the paradoxical thing of the entire report or the model which says is that there would be increase in rainfall, there would be more severe cyclones, at the same time paradoxically there would be more droughts. So droughts also would be very high. So it is, that is what we were actually, I was also discussing in many of the sessions that at one, I mean, in one region or one state, uh, we have the uh, total flooding in the in the rainy season, that is Indian uh, southwest monsoon season, and then the other part of India is actually under drought. So definitely, this kind of what you say situation is because of the impact of global warming. Because of the impact of the global warming, we can definitely experience in the near future that the Indian subcontinent will have or will experience annual rainfall which will be very high and not only very high we will also see severe cyclones as we are experiencing now and along with that paradoxically we will also see or experience the droughts in the Indian subcontinent and that is what is very very important in regards to the, the climate forecasting model which has been developed by the Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology and it will uh, which is in Pune which will uh, submit a report along with what do you say uh, the report which will be part of the intergovernmental panel on climate change. So definitely if you look at the report which talks about uh, the 19 from 18, 1986 to 200 2015, 1986 to 2015, the hottest day and the coldest night if they have considered that the warm is 0.63 degree centigrade and the cool at the nights is 0.4 degrees. So they have taken the what is the average from 1986 to 2014, the hottest day and the coldest day, the increase is 0.63 degrees, that is almost close to what is a 1 degree and then 0.5 of a degree in the nights, hottest day and the coldest night. And the end of the 21st century, the temperature will rise to approximately 4.7 degrees and 5.5, 5.5 degrees. So this is very, 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 what is a disturbing trend, a disturbing facts. We, if you are experiencing only 1 to 3 degrees, 1 to 2 or 1 to 3 degrees of change in the temperature itself, we are unable to bear the heat. So when it is almost 5 to 5.5 degrees, so it will be a very, very, what do you say, uh, unbearable uh, temperatures or unbearable summers we would be experiencing it. And also the report uh, recently we have also discussed that the number of days, the hot days, in previous classes also I have said, the hot days, what it was actually from 5 to 7 days, what you say recently, it will extend to 15 days and also further it will extend to almost 30 days to 45 days. So this extension of hot days will have a greater impact on the summer season and that is because of the impact of the global warming, impact of the global warming, which is very, very important. What do you say? Uh, news for the prelims as well as mains examination, ecology and environment. In regards to the ecology and environment, it is very, very important. And the hypothetical scenario where no steps are taken to curb the global greenhouse gas emissions. And that global greenhouse gas emission, global greenhouse gas emission, it is also called as or RCP 8.5. So again, prelims point of view, please do take it into consideration. This is very, very important. You might think that it is not, but this is how the UPSC will be framing the questions, wherein many of the civil servant aspirants will exclude it or they will move away from it, not trying to identify it. And the other news is government banks disperse 16,031 crore to MSME. So as we were discussing also that, that it was 
with it was very very important at the time wherein prime minister and then finance minister have come up with trying to protect and then pump the liquidity into the micro small and medium enterprises and we have seen couple of days back news that because of the global uh, credit rating agencies like snp fitch and also others which have also made it very clear that because of the contraction of the gdp national gdp there would be impact on the msmes itself the revenue total revenue collection all also the profit profit making also on the ms msmes it will be an impact and that is what now again finance minister is saying that the public sector banks have dispersed 16000 crores of rupees out of the or under the 3 lakh crore emergency this is again important key phrase emergency credit line guarantee scheme so there is a scheme which has been taken up by the finance minister it in regards to in regards to the scheme is in regards to the msmes to protect to protect the msmes and what is the scheme that is emergency credit line guarantee scheme emergency credit line guarantee scheme and this has been brought up by which rate concessional rate that is 9.25 percentage and these are all very very important from economy point of view for prelims economy point of view for prelims which could be asked in regards to the scheme which has been brought up or which has been uh, brought up by the finance ministry to uh, to uh, preserve or to make sure that they protect the msmes that is emergency credit line guarantee scheme for the msme sectors with the 9.25 percentage with the 9.25 percentage and the scheme is the biggest is the biggest fiscal component is the biggest fiscal fiscal in the sense expenditure component fiscal means expenditure so it is the biggest fiscal component keyword it is the biggest fiscal component of the entire 20 lakh crore uh, package which the prime minister has come up in regards to the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan package so again this is a key phrase which is a key phrase that is in regards to the biggest the emergency credit line guarantee scheme is the biggest financial is the biggest financial or fiscal uh, uh, fiscal component and this is part of what atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan package it is part of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan package which is again very i am i am <laughs> reiterating my point all these are very very important if you are make sure that you are very serious and identify the keywords and the key phrases and then you will definitely what you say get into the mode of being very very easy while you are preparing for the prelims point or for the mains point of view and this is important atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan package and the scheme is the emergency credit line guarantee scheme and what does it do the scheme is the biggest fiscal component biggest fiscal what is fiscal expenditure and it is a biggest expenditure component which has been come up by the government of india that is by the finance ministry and if you look at under the scheme that is we are talking about the uh, the biggest fiscal component scheme 100% guarantee coverage there is 100% guarantee coverage and this is again another point which is very very important and this guarantee coverage is what not from the government please do understand there are various things which you need to but is a look at at the conceptual point of view conceptual point of view 100% guarantee is not from the government not from the government it is from the national credit guarantee trusty company the government is not giving 100% guarantee coverage for the what is it the one who takes loan under the msme uh, that in regards to the Uh, emergency credit line guarantee scheme that is ECLGS it is not that the government is giving 100% guarantee under the scheme 100% guarantee but the UPS will definitely confuse you it will give a statement 100% guarantee by the government of india under interest subvention please do understand the if the UPS will frame a, a, a sentence saying that which among the following uh, which among the following are incorrect so in that it might say that ECLGS which has been come up with this scheme is an 100% guarantee coverage by the government of india under the interest subvention under the interest subvention no it is not interest subvention subvention is what that means the government will go ahead with paying the interest only the interest not the principal amount 
only the interest but here the government is not going or not taking or not acting as a what is a guarantee which is acting as a guarantee here national credit guarantee trustee company please do understand very very important these are all conceptual for the economy point of view so which is a guarantee national credit guarantee trustee company and the one who have actually what you say gone ahead with taking the funding or being benefited in regards to 3 lakh crore who are eligible msmes and also in regards to the mudra this is again very important key phrase for the prelims and mains point of view what is mudra micro units development and refinance agency micro units development and refinance agency the one who have borrowed under the mudra Please do understand the one micro, small, and medium enterprises who have bought the borrowed the or who have gone ahead with taking loans under the mudra loans. So that is also are taken up once even in regards to the mudra loans. That is micro units development and refinance agency borrowers in the form of guarantee emergency credit line. So they have taken under mudra in the form of guarantee emergency credit line facility. So you have various keywords in the key phrases here which are very very important for you to focus for you to focus and anand very good morning anand very good morning and what are the very important is the credit guarantee not by the government but by the but by the national credit guarantee trustee company and also under the one who have taken loans under mudra and mudra in the form of guarantee emer guaranteed emergency credit line all these credit lines guarantees emergency uh, you need to please get into the mode of understanding the keywords and the key phrases for the conceptual understanding of the economy and the public sectors banks have also sanctioned the uh, what is a 32000 crores under 100% easy lgs for msmes on june 1st so what is important is the easy lgs is very important the scheme which is the biggest which is the biggest fiscal component which is a fiscal biggest component scheme so we have taken into consideration of the news which is again i mean which is a disturbing one uh, 20 indian persons have been killed and this is in regards to india china the uh, foreign diplomacy which is act to be taken very very seriously and effectively and then in regards to the what you say snd i have taken this uh, news very uh, new the uh, the scientist or the indian doctors indian doctors and scientists uh, in regards to the who administered recovery trial which is the largest global clinical trial has come up saying that uh, the dexamethasone can be used uh, on the patients who are on ventilator this is for uh, snt and this again we have looked at for the SNT and this lives and livelihood is what Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said. Here we have spoken about the Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign and this is very very important for prelims as well as mains examinations. Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign, five pillars of self reliance and the uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat that is focused on four else what Prime Minister has said, land, labor, liquidity and loss and bold reforms which are need of the hour which are part of it and the five pillars are economy infrastructure system demography and demand and then a report by the uh, 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 projections which have been uh, brought up or based on the climate forecasting model which has been developed by the iitm that is indian institute of tropical metrology again this is in regards to the climate that is global warming on the global warming you can take this for the prelims point of view climate change or global warming and then they have, will come up with a report in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, in the year 2022. And then again in regards to the economy, we have looked at the MSMEs. And in regards to looking at the MSMEs, that is the scheme which I have looked at for Flint's point of view, especially Emergency Credit Line Guarantee Scheme. And it is the biggest fiscal component, which is at 9.25% and it is part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan Package. Atmanirban Bharat Abhiyan package and this is being provided by 100% guarantee not by the government but by the National Credit Guarantee Trustee Company NCGTC National Credit Guarantee Trustee Company and the one who have taken under the loans that is for the uh, eligible MSMEs and also the interested mudra borrowers mudra is micro units development and refinance agency 
under in the form of guaranteed emergency credit line. So definitely you have various keywords in the key phrases which you need to emphasize, which will be very, very important to identify. As I have explained how we can identify the factual and conceptual questions for the prelims point of view and also mains wherein you can invite these keywords in the key phrases which will be useful for you. And I hope this session was very informative, knowledgeable for the prelims as well as mains examination. Do like the uh, the video, share the video, subscribe the Let's Crack UPSC CS English. You can subscribe for 12 months and 24 months by using my code SBT10 that is Sandeep Bhushan Tumala10 wherein you can avail 10% discount on the original price. And then if you haven't downloaded the Unacademy Learners app, do download it and be part of the Unacademy Special Classes. You can have access to various courses of Let's Crack UPSC CS English by various educators. And you can also have access to the UPSC CSE English in 10 minutes. And the telegram link is Let's Crack UPSC CSE English. And then my, te my telegram link is wherein you can connect to me. That is t.me slash Sandeep Bhushan SBT. I repeat, my telegram link is t.me slash Sandeep Bhushan SBT. And then you can also uh, WhatsApp, I mean, message to my WhatsApp number. That is 9292003311. Wherever you have any kind of doubts in regards to the preparation or in regards to the subject, any doubts, you can message me to my WhatsApp number 9292003311. And then I would say thank you to everyone. And then make sure that you take care of your health. Take care of your health and then uh, take care of your physical and mental health also. And then uh, uh, make sure that you are in the consistency of preparation mode be stick to the schedule and be consistently and definitely you will get through the examination UPS examination thank you thank you very much and see you once again at 10 15 a.m so definitely you have a session once more at 10 15 a.m that is in regards to the analysis of the Hindu editorials and articles thank you very much and then see you at 10 15 and do not forget while you are using my code do not forget to use my code while you are subscribing Use my code SBT10 Sandeep Bhushan Mala10.